first to admit outright that when a game studio of any stripe pinches out a steaming log, like many of you, I often find myself almost anticipatory in my desire to blame the publisher. But let's be real, as culpable parties go, companies like EA, Square Enix, Capcom, Sega, and all the rest make some fairly tempting fucking targets. We've seen Capcom regularly charge their customers for data that was already pressed to the fucking game disc. We've seen Square Enix with a straight face, mind you, charge laughable prices for a bikini made of fucking moogles. These companies are beyond disreputable. They're Limburger from Biker Mice from fucking Mars, but they're also not always to blame. And it's important for your credibility that you periodically acknowledge this fact. And I find the more public their spokesman, the more fixated the irrational ire of the public seems to be on a single person from that publisher. Take John Ricciatello, formerly the CEO of Electronic Arts. Now, I get that standing in defense of John Ricciatello or EA is somewhere between Putin's Ukrainian foreign policy and the Affordable Health Care Act and the macrocosm of public contempt, but I genuinely feel Ricciatello didn't so much get the short end of the stick as found himself mercilessly bludgeoned to death with the motherfucker. At the beginning of his regime in 2007, there's a fairly strong argument to be made that this man took EA from being the movie tie-in cash grab foundry that it was between the years of 2000 and 2006 shitting out raw oysters like Lord of the Rings The Turd Age and GoldenEye Rogue Agent to a company that actually occasionally produced <gasps> original IPs. In fact, his first order of business as CEO was to greenlight multiple prominent new AAA IPs like the Saboteur, Mirror's Edge, Dead Space, Dragon Age, and of course they inked the deal with, to make uh, Brutal Legend. And that's a good thing. The problem, of course, is that only Dead Space and Dragon Age sold worth a shit, and this immediately eroded his standing with EA's cutthroat executive board, and so the descent from attic to septic tank began. Take Mass Effect. Some people blame Bioware, rightfully, for Mass Effect 3's laundry list of categorical failings, but for every one of them, there's five blithering fuckwits shrieking that EA ruined Bioware. Bullshit they fucking did. Bioware wanted to be a bigger company. Why do you think they left Microsoft for EA in 2007 anyways? With Microsoft, they were making middle market RPGs that made up for in depth what they lacked in AAA polish. They wanted to make more vapid games that sold more copies. That was Bioware's idea, not EA's. I don't know how many wrestling fans watch my show, but many of you will be familiar with a show called Botchamania. It's great. The thing is, Botchamania, while often entertaining, is also occasionally completely full of shit. And here's why. Because half the shit on that show isn't actually a botch of any description, meaning an actual mistake. It's just a shitty idea that went off exactly as TNA or WWE intended. To wit, Mass Effect 3 is not a good idea with bad execution caused by EA's political interference or whatever the fuck. It's a bad idea that was executed precisely as Bioware intended. And EA has fuck all to do with that. Hell, even Ray Mozaika, the co-founder of Bioware, who left in 2012, said in an interview a year ago that he didn't blame EA for the company's current struggles. His exact words were, EA gave us enough rope to hang ourselves with, and Clint Eastwood must have been in fucking earshot because they hung him fucking high for a fact. That game eats ass. But nowhere is the publisher made more of a whipping boy than in all cases involving Obsidian Entertainment, which I find hilarious because Obsidian are an independent developer, people. What the fuck can LucasArts or Bethesda legally do to them except force them to abide by the terms of the contract they voluntarily fucking signed? They get to choose what contracts they sign. They get to choose how long they agree to work on said contract and to what extent they'll remain involved with said project in the future. LucasArts didn't fuck Obsidian over by rushing them on KOTOR 2. LucasArts forced them to deliver the product they promised in the time frame they promised. Obsidian fanboys act like LucasArts were asking Chris Avalon to haul cast iron bathtubs to the base of Mount Olympus using only his crank. They had a year, they had an existing game engine, and 80 to 90% reused art resources. I mean, what the fuck did you people do in middle school? I mean, sure, it's sometimes the teacher will give you an extension on your homework, maybe even often, it's a, if it's a cool fucking teacher, but at some point you have to lock the fuck into the fact that assignments have fucking deadlines. If your essay can be as long as you like, but it's due in three fucking days, common logic dictates that you'll probably cut that essay down to a length commensurate with the fact that you'll have to finish the bastard in three fucking days. If you deliver the essay 
with no ending? Is that the teacher's fault for not granting you a deadline extension that he or she is not compelled to provide? Or is it your fault for not being realistic about what you can conceivably complete in a given time frame? Look, I'm not saying publishers are blameless. In fact, I'm saying the opposite. And every publisher and developer relationship is different. That's why I hold Obsidian, an independent developer who enjoy the liberty of choosing their own projects, as more responsible for the successes and failings of their product than, say, a Quantic Dream, who are literally owned, operated, and otherwise at the complete unbending mercy of Sony Computer Entertainment. And yet the intellectually dyslexic fanboys, steeped as they are in a haze of self-deception fucking perpetually, believe the exact opposite. But the very fact that developers are conditioned to expect deadline extensions speaks to the busted-ass structure of the developer-publisher relationship in general today, and shit does generally roll downhill. But the fact is that we as gamers now seem to be wired to assume innocence in all manners considering concerning the developer, and we can't even hear certain publishers' names without loading our fucking shotguns. That is deeply unfair and actually fairly unhealthy for the industry at large, period. I'm Razorfist. God fucking speed.